Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at another tragic yet somehow predictable tale from Reddit Cheating Stories. So without further ado, she cheated after nine years. I haven't told this story here. I have a feeling it will be a long one. I've lived with my partner a little over nine years now. Some years have been better than others, but this last year was a downward spiral. We both have mental disorders that can make it difficult to work. When I met my partner, she was on disability. I was working temporary jobs. And sometimes, my depression would get so bad, I would be out of work for a while. So right away, we struggled financially. But she was able to go back to work, working as a secretary at first, and then she was promoted to payroll processor. I was happy that she went back to work, and she definitely seemed happier. But she was still overweight and her health problems definitely had me worried, especially when she ended up in the hospital for days. She went there for a kidney stone, but her blood sugar was so high they had to keep her for longer. So I was happy when she had the weight loss surgery last year and lost around 100 pounds. Her health has really improved, and our bedroom life. We started hiking and going to the beach more, but things started to get worse after that. Just one of the ironic things about my story she lost her job and both of us were doing temporary work. We were struggling financially because we had two car payments and my partner was spending her money on alcohol and other things and not enough on bills. I managed to pay the rent, but I didn't have enough for all the bills. Around this time, I started being concerned about my partner's behavior. She got drunk and told me she wanted to have bedroom fun with the neighbor. I think he wanted to have a threesome, but I'm not bi. And I told her I didn't think it was a good idea to do it with the neighbor while she was drunk and she should have discussed it ahead of time with me anyway. I told her I was upset by her behavior when she was sober. She then blamed it on the alcohol, and she told me she couldn't believe she wanted to have bedroom fun with him. Around this time, I also caught her sending an inappropriate text, and then I noticed she locked her phone. So I told her to unlock her phone if she had nothing to hide, and she agreed, but by this time I knew something was wrong. I always trusted her before, and I hated not trusting her. We were fighting a lot, partly because of financial stress, but it also seemed like she would just pick fights with me over nothing. And I was also upset about the lack of intimacy, so I was beginning to think the relationship was over and thinking about leaving, even though I didn't really understand how it got to this point entirely. But I thought, we're almost to nine years, so maybe I won't give up yet. And then I caught her texting a coworker. I wanted to see the text, and she got mad and told me she was going to cheat on me. I was not entirely surprised at this point, I just didn't understand why. And I asked why she would want to cheat after 9 years. She told me our relationship was over, which I guess she used to justify her actions to herself. I still tried to talk her out of it, and she repeated back to me that I had said our relationship was toxic. I was drunk when I said that, but I guess she proved me right. I remember watching her drive away with a rude gesture. I was still in shock especially since this was not long after our anniversary, another ironic part of my story. I didn't even know if she was coming back, but she called me later and told me she felt horrible and she was coming back. At first she denied having bedroom fun. I didn't really believe that, but I was still trying to understand why. I felt even worse when she admitted they had bedroom fun later, and I told her I didn't believe she felt horrible, because she had plenty of chances to change her mind and she didn't. She said that she still felt horrible, and she didn't know why she did it, except she originally thought she was tired of fighting, but realized she was starting the fights, and she realized how bad she was treating me before. She didn't blame me, and told me she still loved me, and didn't want me to leave. But she would understand if I did. I didn't know what I wanted to do. It would have been a lot easier if she had just left. So after more discussion, drinking, confusion, and pain, I told her I would try to give her another chance, but I couldn't promise I would stay. And I wanted to see if she was really going to try to save the relationship that she claimed was over before. This was in December, and while I was still processing what had happened, a couple of weeks later I suspected she was talking to the guy again. She told me she was going to do laundry one day, but she looked a bit happy for doing chores, and I noticed she did her hair. So I had a really bad feeling, but I was hoping I was wrong. But then, she was taking a long time, so I called her and she didn't answer right away. So I knew she was cheating. Because she would have answered the phone if she was really doing laundry. 
She tried to make some stupid excuse, but I told her I knew she was lying. So the next day she finally admits it to me. I thought I would have left at that point, but I just told her I'm considering this an open relationship now because she apparently wasn't capable of commitment. I decided that what was upsetting me wasn't really jealousy, and I was still enjoying our bedroom life. But I got tired of all the lies, so I told her if she wants an open relationship, then I'll stay. But not if she's going to keep lying about things. But at this point, I thought it was just bedroom fun, and then things got even worse. She started spending more time at his apartment, so it was really difficult being here alone most of the time, since I was used to living with her. At this point, I really wanted to leave, because it was too painful to watch her leave and spending the night alone, having nightmares. But about this time, I got really sick. I didn't have insurance, so I was just laying in bed, feeling even more miserable. The affair lasted up until around Valentine's Day, so I can hate that holiday as well. I was finally starting to feel better physically. The worst part was that she even told me she loved this guy, which I knew was impossible. I guess she had some kind of obsession with the guy, and I think he got tired of her shit and stopped seeing her, which is exactly what I told her would happen. She acted like she was really upset, even though she told me she was ending it before that. I obviously had no sympathy. She ended up going to the mental hospital for a week. I'm hoping that she keeps getting treatment, since it seems she had some kind of obsession. I'm still living with her. I don't have the nightmares anymore, at least. But there is more irony. We went to work at the same job, and I get to hear people comment on how great our relationship is. LOL. Redditor comment. OP, your situation is a lot. What do you see as a healthy, happy relationship? Is it the relationship you're currently in, or do you see something completely different? I only ask because most people don't see an open relationship where boundaries are crossed and the partner clearly doesn't respect them as a healthy relationship. I think you need to consider what you want your relationship to be. When it comes to boundaries, you need to be a lot more strict. You have effectively told her, if you do this then I'm going to leave, but you don't leave. If she feels like she can break boundaries without any repercussions, then she's going to break boundaries. You need to be a lot more ready to walk away than to stay. Because she's making the choices to harm your relationship, and you're enabling them by allowing her to continue. I think opening your relationship was not a very smart move to be honest. You already were struggling, and now you've opened the door to a lot more problems that you and her need to address. And some of those problems you have to address with yourself if you're okay with happening. You know, potentially getting an STD, or her getting pregnant by someone else, or leaving you for the other guy. The list goes on, but you have to decide if you're okay with that. Also, is this relationship open for both parties or just her? I think you really need to think your relationship through a little bit more, and at the bare minimum, set very clear, strong boundaries that if she tiptoes around or oversteps, you walk away. Because the goal is to have a healthy, happy relationship, and those have boundaries, respect, and love. Do you see your current relationship as a healthy, happy one? If it's not, either talk to her and make the necessary changes you both need to make, or walk away. But in order for the relationship to be happy and healthy, everyone needs to contribute 110% to fix the problems. But opening the relationship, giving excuses, enabling others, is never going to put that relationship in a better place. Story 2 Girlfriend, little boy, everything. So me and this girl I met at work have been dating for over a year. Around six months ago we decided to move in together. She wants to buy a house first and quickly gets approved, but it takes about five months for the solicitors to get their shit together. A friend of mine, also works with me, needed to move into town at short notice as his other boss wants the house back and he has no lease or anything. So I said I'll speak to the girlfriend and see when we're moving in together and he can have my flat. Anyway, I talked to my girlfriend, and she says she wants a couple of weeks to fix up the house before I move in. Ceilings need stripping and replastering, etc. I offer to stay at the house alone and get the work done, and agree with the friend that I can stay another two weeks at the end of the month, and we agreed with the landlord. Told my GF I was giving notice and the dates she could weigh in, and all was good. I took three unpaid weeks off work, fixed up the house, stripped and prepped all the walls, cleaned, family came up, six hour drive and cleared the enormous garden of eight-foot-high bramble, the works. My friend signs a contract for the flat, and the following day my girlfriend says, she can't have me move in right now, it's too much. 
Please bear in mind at this point, for at least four months or so, I've only been spending three nights a fortnight at my flat, because I've been at her old house with her and the little boy, so I've been pretty much living with them anyway. But I said okay, and she drove off. Doesn't speak to me for days. Breaks up with me a few days later. Two days later, a guy from work tells me she's been seeing someone else for a while. Him and another guy from work found out a few days prior and gave him the weekend to tell me or they would. He lied to me, so they told me. Here's the kicker. It's the guy I gave my flat to. So now I'm homeless, and that flat was 200 pounds a month cheaper than anywhere else. Even better, I had a word with the landlord who I get on great with, and managed to get 25 pounds a month taken off the rent for the other guy because I know he's struggling with money. Not allowed to see the little boy I've been raising almost half his life, because it's confusing to have men coming in and out of his life, but less than two weeks from the split, the new guy is going to the park with him. But it's okay guys, they're not in a relationship, they're just really good friends. Also, three weeks later, she tells me it's too soon to be dating. Madness. So now I've got a 1700 pound engagement ring to return and an 800 pound ring that's too late to return. At least it covers part of the deposit for my next place when I find one. Yes, we all still work together. I'm staying very friendly with both of them and they are shit scared I'm gonna snap because I'm too calm. Honestly, they might be right. Edit. This all went down a few weeks ago, so quick update. Within a couple of days of this, I secured a new job. Half the hours, almost double the pay. I've got two degrees and I was working a shitty job because I was comfortable cruising. Still working one day a week at the old one for the free perks. Everyone knows what's happened at this point. Called out the guy at work, he's never gonna live it down. My old neighbors have said they're more than capable of making the guy's life very difficult, as have hers, who I made friends with while fixing up the house in her absence. Got myself a massive upgrade to rent through the old landlord, great guy. And through a financial advisor, it turns out I can afford a decent sized mortgage, enough for a three bed property in my area. Shitty situation turned into the kick up the arse I needed to get my shit together. Onwards and upwards. Also, to clarify, I think a couple of people missed some sarcasm in the original post, and I'm staying friendly with them specifically because they're scared I'm gonna snap. The satisfaction is unbelievable, and everyone that works there is feeding their anxiety over it. I want to see how long before they quit. Absolutely disgusting. She used him for free renovations and childcare. His so-called friend used him for a new place to live. OP did the right thing cutting these people out of his life. Hopefully those neighbors can give him a hard time for him. So let us know what you think about this down in the comments. Should we be seeing OP posting on Pro Revenge sometime in the near future? Or has he let it go? Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for notifications. And stay tuned for more stories. Until next time.